let's implement the email verification logic where we generate signed verification URLs. A signed URL is essentially a regular URL with added security measures. It includes an expiration timestamp and a signature, which can be thought of as a secure seal of authenticity. This signature allows us to validate the integrity of the URL, ensuring that no part of it has been manipulated or tampered with during the transit. It basically is a hash of the URL's contents along with a secret key that is only known to the server. So when server receives a request, it can use the same secret key to generate a new hash from the URL's contents and then check if the new hash matches the provided signature. This way we can be sure that the URL has not been tampered with, otherwise the hashes would not match. Frameworks like Laravel provide this functionality out of the box and make it easy to generate signed URLs. Our implementation will actually be similar to that. So in our sign up email where we're sending the email out, we need uh, this activation link. So let's create some kind of variable here called activation link. And maybe let's call some kind of method here called generate signed URL. And then we'll take this and replace this here. Now, what pieces of information do we need to construct our signed URL? First, I guess let's decide on what our URL should look like and then we can build it up step by step. So we have some sort of base URL, right? Like HTTPS, the domain.com. In our case, that's localhost port 8000. But for now, let's just assume it's some kind of base URL. So we'll do base URL slash, and then we need to have some sort of route. Now, in our case, we already have the slash verify route. So we could create another route here with a slash verify and some additional information. So let's put verify here. And we also need to identify the user somehow, whoever is making the request or whoever is clicking on that link. So maybe we can include something like the user ID in here. So we'll do user ID. And I know that exposing user ID in the email is not a good practice because it can expose some internal information like how many users there are in the system. But this is a small application and I don't really care for that. So we're just going to stick with the user IDs. If you don't want to expose the user ID, you can use something like UUID and add that column to the users table and the user entity and use that to identify the user. I don't want to spend more time on that, so we'll just stick with the user ID. For additional security, however, we can also include the email hash in the URL. So we'll do slash and do email hash. Next, we need the expiration timestamp, right? We can include that as part of the query string. So we can have something like expiration equals expiration timestamp. And the final piece of this URL is the signature, which can also be part of the query string. So we can do ampersand signature equals signature. All right, so the final URL that we need to construct looks like this. Now we can accept the user ID, email, and the expiration as arguments in this method. So we can do int user ID, string, email, and date time, expiration, date. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do here is that we're going to convert expiration date into timestamp because we need the timestamp for the URL. So we'll do expiration equals expiration date get timestamp. Next, we need to construct the route and the query parameters because we have these route parameters right here and the query parameters right here. Before we do that, let's actually create this route in our routes file. So let's open our web.php. Let's duplicate this. We'll have verify slash ID slash hash. We can use the same verify controller. And for the method, we can call something like verify. Let's actually create this method within this controller. So we'll do public function verify server request interface request and response interface response and this returns a response interface as well and let's just return response for now we'll implement this later on so let's go back here let's create the route and the query params uh, variables so we have route params and for the route we need the id which is user ID and the hash is the email hash. So we can use SHA1 email and that's it. For the query params, we have the expiration and we'll add the signature later on because we haven't figured out how to generate the signature yet. 
All right, so we now have pretty much all the components we need to generate our URL, except for the signature and the base URL. We could parse the request URI and get the base URL from there, but easier thing to do is to store it in the config and get it from there. I've actually already done that behind the scenes and stored the base URL in environment variable and pulled it in the app config file. So if I open the app.php, we have this app URL right here. And if I open the env file, we have the app URL set to localhost port 8000. So we can pull this in from the config file. So we can do base URL equals this config get app underscore URL. Let's also trim off any trailing slashes from the base URL. All right, now to generate the signature, we need to have the full URL because as I mentioned before, signature is basically a hash of the route contents or the URL contents. In this case, we need to have this whole URL and then hash that to generate the signature. Route parser has a method called URL4 that generates the URL based on the named route and accepts the route params as well as the query params as arguments so we don't have to build up the URL manually. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to name our route. Right now we have verify slash ID slash hash but we need to give it a name. We can name this verify and then in our sign up email we can inject the route parser interface so we'll do private read only route parser interface and then in here we can do this route parser url4 uh, the first argument is the route name which is verify the second argument is the data or the route parameters so we'll pass the route parameters right here and the third argument is the query parameters which we have it as well now this generates the url without the base url and because we have the base url here we can just prepend it in here so base url concatenated with the generated url for the route so this url right here covers this part of the url the final piece is to generate the signature before we do that we actually need to create an entry in the container bindings for the route parser interface so let's open container bindings scroll down we'll do route parser interface we can get the route parser instance from the app instance so we can inject the app instance in here and do app get route collector and then call get route parser on it let's import this class format the code and close that out all right so at this point as i mentioned before we have a fully formed but not yet signed url the last step is to generate a signature for our URL and append it as a query parameter to the entire URL. We can do this by using hash hmac function. So we can do something like signature equals hash hmac. The first argument here we need to pass is the algorithm. We'll use SHA-256. And the second argument is the data or the string that we want to hash. And in this case, that's the URL that we want to hash. And the third argument is the secret key. And I'll explain what that is in a second. So let's just assume that we have some kind of secret key in here. So hash hmac basically creates a hash of the data string, which is URL in this case, using the SHA-256 algorithm and the secret key. Now the secret key is just a random string that is stored within our app's config. You can think of it as a special password that would not be shared. Now I've created a doctrine command behind the scenes to allow you to generate a secret key. So first let's open the app.php. As you can see we have a new entry here called app key and this pulls in the value from the environment variables. Now in my env file I don't have app key defined yet and you can either define it manually or generate it using the command that i created command that you can run is defined right here so it's app colon generate key so let's copy that open terminal we'll do php expenies paste in the command and we see message stating that new app key has been generated and saved now if we open the env file we see that app key has been added in here so if you're following along, make sure to run this command to generate your app key. All right, so let's close this out, go back here, and we'll replace this with this config get app key. And now we have our signature. 
Now the final step is to construct the signed URL. We can again use the URL for method to construct the URL. So we can do something like return base URL concatenated with this route parser URL4 for verify. Then we'll pass route params, query params, and we need to append the signature as part of the query params because right now the query params contains only the expiration. So we can do plus signature equals signature. And now this should return an URL that looks like this. Now to make this more versatile, we can put this into a dedicated class and modify it a little bit to allow signed URL generation for any given route because right now this is sort of hard coded to verify. What if we wanted to generate a signed URL for another route? So what we can do is that we can copy this code actually. So let me take that and let's create a new class. So we'll create that class within the app namespace. So we'll do create a new PHP class. We'll call it signed URL. Let's create a method here called public function from route because essentially we are creating a URL from a route. And let's paste in the code in here. Now the first step here is to get rid of this, right? So we need to accept the route name as an argument. So we'll do string route name, and then we'll replace this with this and the same thing in here. Then we should also accept the route parameters as an argument here, because these route parameters are sort of specific to the verify route and we want it to be reusable and flexible. So instead we can accept the route params as an argument here. Let's make this array, get rid of it from here. And we should also accept the expiration date. So we'll do date time, expiration date. And finally, we need the config and route parser uh, injected in the constructor. So we'll do construct private read only config config and private read only route parser interface. Let's add the return type in here and let's call this method from sign up email. So we can actually get rid of this. Let's scroll up. We need to inject the signed URL as an argument here. And we'll replace this with signed URL from route. We'll pass verify. We need to pass the route params here. So we need the user ID and the email hash. So it will be SHA1 email and we need the expiration date and we have the expiration date right here. So let's take that, put it here, expiration date. Let's pass that in here and pass that in here as well. Now we do need the user ID and the email. We do have the email here as an argument, but we don't have the user ID. So instead of accepting just an email, why don't we accept the user entity as an argument? So we'll do user and we can replace this with user get ID and replace this with user get email. We actually need to call get email a second time in here. So why don't we just revert this back to email, change this to email and define that variable in here. Let's format the code. Let's update it here to pass the user entity instead of email. All right, so let's test this out. Let's open the browser, register a new user. The user has been registered. We see this message that we need to check the email to verify it. Let's switch to Mailhog. We have the email. And sure enough, we have that link right here. And we also have the expiration time. Let's click on this link and we're getting blank page, which is expected because we haven't implemented that part yet. Great, so the next step is to build the verification part. Now we should probably split the verification into two parts. First, we should verify the validity of the signature in the URL and the second, verify the actual user. The reason for this is to have reusable signature verification so that we can verify signatures of other URLs that we might have in future aside from the user verification emails. So for the first part, we can create a new middleware to validate the signature. We can call that middleware something like validate signature middleware. So let's open the project files. Let's go to middleware. We'll maybe duplicate one of these. So we'll call it validate signature middleware. Let's close that out. Uh, we'll change the implementation here. So let's get rid of this and we'll get rid of this as well. 
and let's grab the URI and the query parameters from the request and store them in variables. So we'll have URI equals request get URI and query params equals request get query params. Then let's grab the signature and expiration from the query params and store those in variables as well. So we have original signature equals query params signature and if it's not set for whatever reason we'll set it to empty and the expiration is query params expiration and if that's not set we'll set it to zero by default then we should generate a new signature using the url and compare that signature with the original signature to see if it's valid if they don't match that means that url might have been tampered with now to generate the signature we again need to use the hash hmac function similar to how we did in our signed url class right here so let's copy this and let's paste it in here and for the url we have the uri and this uri is actually an object of the uri interface so we need to cast it to string because it implements the two string magic method it's important to note that when the original signed URL was generated, the signature part was not included in the URL that was being hashed. So in here, when we're hashing or creating the signature, the URL here does not contain the signature. It only has the expiration right here. However, in our validation signature middleware, when we're generating the signature, this URL is the full URL of the request, which contains the signature as part of its query string. So hashing the entire URL, including the signature part, will not match the original signature. So to fix this, we need to exclude the original signature from the query params when generating a new signature in here. Now, since we are already assigning this to a variable, we no longer need that within the query params. So we can do something like unset query params signature and that should remove the signature from the query params and leave us with just the expiration which basically mirrors the original query params of the url that we used to create the original signature we can use the with query method on the uri object to reconstruct the url using the new query params so we can do something like url equals uri with query and pass the new query params then we can take this and replace this in here. Now, as you can see, it's highlighting here. And if we inspect it, it's letting us know that expected parameter type is string, but we're providing an array. So with query method expects a query string and we're basically giving it an array. We need to construct a proper query string. We can use HTTP build query to do that, which accepts an array and builds the query string from an array. Finally, let's inject the config in the constructor here so that we can grab the app key. So we'll do private read only config config. And now that we have the signature generated correctly, we can use the hash equals function to compare the generated signature with the original signature. If that don't match, we can throw some kind of exception like failed to verify signature. In this conditional, we should also check if the link has expired. So we can do something like if expiration, which is a timestamp less than or equal to time, or the hash is an equal, then throw the exception. We could also handle this more gracefully by maybe throwing a custom exception and adding some kind of error handler that would display an error message to the user or just a redirect with a message to the user. But we're not going to go down that rabbit hole for now. Now, otherwise, if everything checks out and the signature is valid, we can move on with the request. So we can do return handler handle request. Now let's add this middleware to our route. So let's open web.php. We'll add this middleware in here. So we'll do add validate signature middleware. All right, with the signature verification out of the way, let's move on to the controller method to actually verify the user. So let's close this out close that out, open verify controller, and let's implement this logic. First, we need to retrieve the logged in user object from the request. So we'll do user equals request get attribute user. Then let's verify that the logged in user ID matches with the user ID that's given in the URL. And we also need to verify the email hash that's given in the URL. So let's add the args in this method. 
uh, because this contains the route arguments, right? Which is the user ID and the email hash. We're going to use hash equals function to do the comparison here because it's timing attack safe string comparison. Imagine you're trying to guess a secret password and the system tells you how close you are to the right answer each time you guess. You could use that information to basically figure out the password bit by bit. A timing attack is just like that. It's when someone tries to figure out a secret piece of information like a password or in our case hash or ID by measuring how long it takes a system to check whether the guess is right or wrong. That's why we use hash equals for hash or sensitive field comparisons even if it's overkill in some cases. So we'll do if the ID of the currently logged in user doesn't equal to the ID that's given in the route or hashed email of the currently logged in user doesn't equal to the hash that is given in the route, then we'll throw some kind of exception stating that verification has failed. Otherwise, if both of these things match, then we have the correct user. All right, now that we have sort of verified both the signature through the middleware and the user, we need to set the verified at date of the user so that they can move on and use the site. So we can check here if the user has no verified at date. So we'll do if user get verified at and negate this, then we'll verify the user by using verify user method on the user provider service, which I added behind the scenes. So we'll do user provider service verify user and pass the user entity let's inject the user provider interface in here so we'll do private read only user provider service interface format the code and let's inspect this method i added this method behind the scenes so i wouldn't waste time uh, doing it in the video it's a simple method that accepts the user entity and if we inspect the user provider service class we see that it just sets the verified at date, which I also added behind the scenes. It's just the setter on the user entity, and then it syncs it with the database. All right, so finally, let's close this out. We can basically redirect the user to the home page because at this point, the user is verified. So we can do response with header location slash, which is the home page, with status 302. All right, so let's test this out. Let's refresh the page here. And as you can see, we are now verified. It was blank before because that's when we initially hit that page. We didn't have the implementation, but after refreshing the page, it redirect us to the home page. That means that this user is now verified. Let's test this out again. So I'm going to log out, sign up, fill in the form, click register. The user has been registered and we redirected here asking us to check the email to verify the user. Let's switch to Mailhog. We have the email. Let's open it up. I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to exit the full screen so we can see the URL. Let me paste it in here. And this time I'm going to actually modify the URL so that we can see what happens uh, when the URL is modified. So we'll change 231 user ID to something like 230 hit enter and we're getting an exception stating that it has failed to verify the signature let's change it back to 231 but change something like the expiration maybe we'll bump this up to 8 hit enter and again we're getting this error let's change this back to the original url hit enter and we're verified successfully all right, so as an exercise, I want you to do one thing. Now let's log out here. I'm going to log in with my user, which hasn't been verified yet. And I don't have an email for this account because this user was created before we implemented this verification email. We need to have some kind of button here that basically resends the verification email with a new verification URL. Why don't you do that as an exercise? Everything is pretty much already done. All you have to do is put a button in here and send an email when it's clicked. All right, so that concludes this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time, happy coding.